All the Mod 6, over 350 mods, unique bosses, and tons of quests. But how do you get started? Today, I'm gonna show you how and teach you everything you need to know to get the best experience from all the Mod 6. Loading into the world for the first time, it's very easy to get lost. New biomes, new blocks, new items. Don't get lost just yet though. Let's start with our basic knowledge of vanilla Minecraft. Grab yourself some basic stone tools and build yourself a little hut to protect yourself. Now that you're safe, we're going to cover the basics of your inventory. The first thing you'll notice is the recipe list on the right side, as well as a search bar at the bottom. Every item you find or want to make will be in this list. So I'm going to give you tips on how to use this properly. Let's start by searching for items. If you don't know how to make something, you can search it in the bar at the bottom. We can type in pickaxe and it'll show us every pickaxe available in the pack. Let's keep things simple and check out the wooden pickaxe. If we left click on the wooden pickaxe on the right, or if we hit the R button, it'll show us a recipe on how to make it. If we look at the tabs at the top, each tab shows us the methods to get the item. The first tab is almost always just shapeless crafting and something like a crafting table. If you look on the left side, you'll see all of the items that act like a crafting table. While looking at the recipe, we can notice that some of the items are changing. This just means that anything of that specific material can be used to make it. In this case of the wooden pickaxe, using any kind of wooden planks at the top will work and any kind of item that is considered a stick will also work. For other items, this just gives you other options to use to craft it. The rest of the tabs will cycle through different ways for you to get the item using different mods. Sometimes this is just a powered machine and sometimes this is a ritual from a magic mod. For a good example on how to use this properly, let's search up a brass ingot in the bottom. If we hit R to see the recipe, it'll show us that combining nuggets together will give us an ingot. But that's not really useful if we don't have any nuggets to begin with. So how do we craft this item? At the top, we want to cycle until we see the induction smelter tab. This machine combines ingots together to create alloys. While you might not understand every tab at the top here, we can see that if we combine copper and zinc in this machine, it'll create two brass ingots. If you don't know how to get copper or zinc, you can always search for it at the bottom. If you do end up searching for it, you'll see that copper and zinc are ores that naturally spawn in the world, which then can be smelted into ingots just like iron. What if we don't know what an item does or we want to see what we can make out of it? This is especially useful for food items because in this mod pack, you can make a ton of different foods by combining ingredients together. Something very common in the forest are fruit trees. For example, if you do happen to run across a lemon tree, you can search up lemon at the bottom and then right click on the recipe instead of left clicking and you'll see every recipe that a lemon is a part of. For the lemon, we can look in the first tab for all of the shapeless crafting recipes we can use it in. We can use them to make more lemon trees and different kinds of foods and drinks. In the top tabs, we can see how all of the other mods just might use a lemon and apparently you can make a breeding shrine out of them. Yeah, I don't know much about that. Here's another tip that will save you a ton of time. If you're working on creating a machine or an item, you can pin the recipe by hitting A while hovering over it. It'll put the recipe on the left side of your inventory where you can quickly access it if you need it. This is useful for complex recipes that require multiple crafted items to create, kind of like a jetpack or machines or pretty much most of the things in this entire mod pack. If you want to unpin this recipe, just click A again when it's on the left side. One last final tip for using this. If you are ever looking up the recipe while in a crafting table, if you have all of the materials in your inventory to make them, a little plus button will highlight at the bottom right of the recipe. If you click this, it will automatically fill out the crafting table with a recipe and save you some time. So now you know how to look up items, it's time to get started with the utilities in all the mod 6, starting with Ultimine. This is referred to as vein mining and you've probably heard it before, but basically this saves you a ton of time when doing almost anything in the mod pack. 
You can quick harvest entire trees, mine entire ore veins, clear out massive pieces of land, all just by holding down one button. That button is the tilde button, which is right beside your one key if you're wondering. With Ultimine, there are several different modes you can use depending on your needs at the time. If you hold down shift while holding that button down, you can see the menu pop up in the top left. Scrolling your mouse wheel lets you change the modes. Let's talk about each of the modes. First off, we have Shapeless. This mines everything the block is connected to up to 64 blocks. This means harvesting entire trees, breaking up all of the sand off of beaches, or mining an entire ore vein. It is the most used, just make sure not to destroy your entire house. Next up, we have the small tunnel mode. This mines the same block in the direction that you're looking at. Keep in mind, it only works for the block you are mining. For example, if you break stone while holding this, it'll break every stone piece behind it until there is a different kind of block like a piece of ore or dirt. This is mostly useful when clearing land to build a house. Up next, we have the small square. This just mines a small square. Mining tunnel is going to save you a ton of time. It mines blocks downwards like a staircase. It creates you a mining tunnel. This is absolutely amazing. The escape tunnel does the exact opposite and mines a staircase going up to help you get out of your mining tunnel or if you're just randomly lost, you can just Pop this and go straight up. A couple of last tips for using Ultimine. Using Shapeless while clearing grass will also clear the grass faster and in a giant area. If you have a hoe, you can use the small square to hoe nine blocks out instead of just one, which is super useful when starting your first farm. You can also use this to harvest a massive area of your crops as well. All right, now we can go out into the world, but what do we do? The first goal should be to make better tools. Go ahead and start your mining adventure. The main goal is to get you some iron, and if you want to pick up any other kind of ore you find, it doesn't hurt. Once you have some iron, head back home so we can start making tools. The easiest way to make good tools early is by using the mod Silent Gear. I'm not going to go into a full guide on how to use this, but I do happen to have a mod spotlight covering this if you want to check it out. <clears throat> Silent Gear allows you to make tools by combining blueprints or templates with materials and a crafting table. You can also customize these tools, upgrade them, and repair them on the go. These are a lot like Tinker's Construct, except for you can do it in a crafting table. To start, you'll want to make yourself some template boards to craft yourself some tools. To do this, start by combining two sticks and a crafting table to make yourself some rough rods. Combine this with a piece of cobblestone and you'll get yourself a knife. If you want to use this as a weapon too, you can, it's pretty quick, it stabs things. But if you combine the knife with wood logs, you'll get template boards. So we're going to make ourselves a Paxel template and a tool rod template. These templates are one time use, so make sure to make yourself the blueprint versions later on when you want to make another tool. So for the Paxel template, we want to put in five pieces of iron in the crafting table as well as the template. And this will give us a Paxel head. We'll put two pieces of iron in with a tool rod template to make ourselves some iron tool rods. And then we want to combine the Paxel head with the tool rod to create our first Paxel. If you don't know what a Paxel is, it's called the all-in-one tool because it combines a sword, shovel, axe, and a pickaxe together. There's no need to make all of the other tools now. You can use this same method for creating armor pieces. So you just craft armor templates and then combine them with iron in a crafting table to make yourselves pieces of gear. You'll get gear parts, so just put that back into the crafting table to get yourself the full armor piece. All of these silent gear items can be repaired and upgraded, and they also come with traits that add little special abilities to them. Like for example, iron is magnetic and will pull things to you like you're a magnet. To repair the tools and items, you need to make yourself a repair kit. Once you've made yourself a repair kit, you could combine the kit with materials in a crafting table, and then you'll take and combine the kit with the tool that you want to repair. Keep in mind that the materials you want to repair need to be the same material that the tool is made out of. Now the tools and armor are all upgradable, and if you want to upgrade the tool, all you have to do is craft a new tool part with the new materials. Once you have the new tool part, just combine that with your old tool and voila, it'll even give you your old part back. 
There are some notable items that you can use early on, like the crafting stick. It's a portable crafting station in your inventory. The backpack, which will allow you to increase your overall inventory space and an item called a dank question mark, which can be set up to store a ton of the same item. This is extremely useful for when you're mining and you're pulling in a ton of cobblestone and whatever all of these other blocks are. It keeps them out of your inventory and keeps them stacked up in the dank. It's pretty dang. From here, you start your progression for tools. The next tier for your tool is diamond, followed by crimson steel. Then it goes all the modium, vibranium, then unobtainium. You can look up each of these ores and items to see where to find them so you don't get lost along the way. So with all these tools and items, it won't take long for you to fill up your chests. If you keep this up, you'll end up with an entire room of double chests. While this would work in vanilla, all the mod 6 has several mods to help you with storage. In the beginning, the easiest way to upgrade your storage is by upgrading your chests. If you take a chest and surround it in iron, you'll make yourself an iron chest. This continues to gold and diamond and more. Each upgrade gives more storage all the way up to the crystal chest that actually just looks really cool when it has like your items floating in the chest and everything is actually really cool. It does cause a lot of lag, so make sure to keep that in mind if you're on a server. You can also just craft upgrades to use directly on the chest instead of having to craft an entirely new chest. Just craft the upgrade and right click on the chest. Before you decide to shove all of your cobblestone or dirt into chests, I suggest taking a look at the mod storage drawers. I hate saying the word drawers, I don't know why, it's probably because I'm southern. The drawers are fairly easy to make and can hold a ton of stacks for a single item. They can also be upgraded to hold more stacks. My favorite way to use the drawers is for my farm. On my way back from collecting all of my crops, I'll have a setup of drawers for each type of seed, food, and any other items that I might end up getting. Right in the middle of my drawers, I'll put a drawer controller. As long as this is connected, once I'm done farming, all I have to do is double right click on the controller and all of my items will be pulled from my inventory and go into the designated drawer. You can also use the drawers for storing cobblestone, dirt, or anything else that you get a ton of stacks of. Now that we have our base storage started, we should also look into getting storage for our travels. I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but early in the game, you should make yourself a backpack from the mod Sophisticated Backpacks. They are easy to craft and they can be upgraded the same way that you upgrade chests. These backpacks can also accept filters, like a void upgrade that automatically deletes unwanted items that you pick up, or an auto feeder that feeds you with food in the backpack. Make sure to search at Sophisticated Backpacks in the search bar to check out all of the items and upgrades in the mod. This storage setup will definitely help in the beginning, but once you get started, you'll want to move into storing your items with the mod Refined Storage. That can be a challenge for you in the future. Next up, we're going to talk about food. There are a ton of food items in the pack, so if you're a farmer or a chef, make sure to get all of the seeds using a market. It's very easy to make and you can trade emeralds for seeds to your local merchant. In the early game, you'll probably run into plenty of fruit trees. If you right click on the fruit, you'll get one and they'll regrow over time. With enough fruit, you can even make more fruit trees. Pro tip, my favorite quick meal is a fruit salad. All it takes is a cutting board and two fruits. Fruit salad, yummy yummy. In this pack, the more foods you eat that are different, the more hearts you'll get. So don't be picky. I'm going to be honest with you. There is one OP food in the beginning you can make that'll carry you for a very long time. Honey apples. It takes a honey block and a single apple and it's broken. The easiest way to set up a farm for this is by starting by grabbing a candleberry seed from your market. When these are fully grown, three of them turns into a honeycomb, which can be processed to give you honey in a centrifuge. If you couple that with a few apple trees, you'll be set for food in the beginning. If you like to grow more than just food, make sure to check out Mystical Agriculture to grow all of the resources in the game, including diamonds. You can literally grow diamonds. All right, next up, we're gonna be talking about getting ores and certain materials. There are tons of ores and materials in the game. If you're looking for a specific ore, 
The best way to find it is by searching it up in that search bar in JEI and see if it has a tab for ore generation. This will tell you the level that you'll most likely find the ore on as well as what world it's in. Now in the beginning, before you set up power, you will also want to upgrade your furnace. Thankfully, we have iron furnaces, which makes it where you can upgrade your furnaces the same exact way that you upgrade your chest and your backpack. Eventually, they can even replace the fuel slot with an item that accepts power. So it is totally worth making these and keeping them. You can also give it upgrades in the left slot, like a speed upgrade or an efficiency upgrade. But speaking of power, we're going to start by making a simple auto smelting setup to get you started in the beginning. Now, if you're not familiar with power in Minecraft, all it does is replace using fuel like coal with electricity. It's needed for a lot of items in the game, like farming machines or mining gadgets. The easiest way to get started is by making yourself a coal generator from RF tools. All it takes is six coal, two redstone torches, and a machine frame made from iron ingots, two gold nuggets, and two blue dye. If you need blue dye, you can just convert a couple of pieces of lapis to make it. Now, once you have your generator, go ahead and place it down. You can stick some coal inside and it'll begin to make power. On the left side, you can see the bar start to fill. Most generators have a small power storage bank, so we'll want to get that power out somehow so we can use it. Now, most experienced mod users will start looking for cables. I'm going to give you a secret. We now have a super simple way of transferring power with a mod called pipes. And that's a pipes with a Z. Pipes gives us three kinds of pipes that are all super easy to make. They can also be upgraded by crafting the pipe upgrades from the mod. They are amazing and super cheap to make, so make sure to use them. So let's start out by crafting ourselves the energy pipe and make sure to get yourself a pipe wrench. You'll have to have the pipe wrench to tell the pipe where to pull from. Next up, we'll need to make us something that uses power. My goal for power usually in the beginning is to get a small renewable energy source set up and that could be easily done by making a few wind generators from the mod mechanism generators. To make these, we'll need to make a specific machine first called the metallurgic infuser. Search it up in the bottom, check out the recipe and go ahead and make yourself one of these. Once you have the infuser, it's time to start hooking up our power. If you place the infuser right beside the coal generator, it'll automatically pull power from it. This is perfectly fine until we get our renewable energy from our windmill. So now that we have the infuser, let's take a look at the recipe for the wind generator. We'll need a few items from the infuser. I'll go ahead and skip you some steps. So grab yourself five pieces of iron and five pieces of redstone. Let's take a look in the infuser and place our redstone on the far left slot and the iron on the left slot. This will convert the iron into an infused alloy. So next up, grab yourself an osmium ingot and two pieces of redstone. We'll do the same exact thing here, but instead of putting the iron in the middle, we'll put our osmium ingot. The osmium ingot infused with redstone will give us a basic control circuit, and this is what we need for a wind generator. From here, going back to the recipe, go ahead and make yourself the two energy tablets and you'll have all of the complicated items needed to make yourself a wind generator. Once we have a wind generator, let's make sure we place it outside in an open area. It won't work unless there is a direct view of the sky. And the higher that you place these, the more power that they'll generate. You place it down and pay attention to the front port. If you right click it, it'll tell you all of the information about the power that's creating and everything but we want to take a look at that front port. This is where you'll pump the power out with our energy pipe. Go ahead and place your energy pipe right in front of that port. And before you go any further, you want to take your pipe wrench and shift right click on the end of the pipe that's connected to the generator. You'll see that it changes the pipe and it tells it that's where it's going to extract from. The way these pipes work is very simple. Shift right clicking on the end of the pipe will tell it, hey, this is where I want to extract from. This is the same thing for item pipes and fluid pipes. Whenever you want to pull something out, you have to shift right click the end of that pipe. Moving on, we're gonna go ahead and use the rest of our pipes to connect our system. And now we have renewable power. 
While this is great for a start, we also need some way to use the power. So we're going to set up a very simple ore doubling system. Since you already have your iron furnace, and if you haven't, you totally should make one. Go ahead and make yourself a pulverizer from thermal expansion. This machine breaks one ore down into two dusts. You can use our furnace to smelt it, and it'll smelt it into two ingots. So once you have your pulverizer, you want to place this down right beside your furnace. And make sure to connect it to your power system. Place a chest on top of it and fill it with all of your ores. Looking into the pulverizer, in the bottom right, you'll see a little cogwheel. And if we click on it, we want to click on the auto input and output arrows. Then to the right of that, we'll want to turn the top face into the blue square. On the right square, we want to turn it into a red square. The blue means input and the red means output. So let's hop out of it and right click on our iron furnace. In the top left, we'll see a little cogwheel. We'll click on that, and we wanna click those two arrows at the top, just like we did in our pulverizer. You'll change the left square to input and the top square to output. You'll put a chest on top of it, and now you have an auto smelting system. Every time you get back from your mining journey, just chuck your ores into the chest above the pulverizer, and over time, it'll smelt everything for you while doubling your ingot output. From here, you can check out the other mods for more ways to use your power system. You can set up auto farms with something like Cyclic, or set up a powered storage system with refined storage. I 100% suggest on getting into refined storage eventually. Now if you've made it this far in the video, you're probably wondering where you go next. The goal of the All The Mods mod pack is to have fun with a ton of mods, but there are quests that you can complete. If you open up your inventory and look in your top left, you can find the quest book as a button. There are a ton of quests for you to complete, all leading up to making an all the mod star. This is the ultimate quest in the pack, so see if you can make it. Getting started with mods can be difficult, but you can always craft yourself the guidebooks that they offer. The easiest way to do this is by putting a stick into your inventory, and it'll craft yourself the acoustic tome question mark? This book can turn into any of the other starter guidebooks that a mod might offer by putting the book in your hand and right clicking into the world. This will open a menu of all the different books that it can be turned into. The tome can help you get started in most of the mods. You can always head to the mods wiki pages to get further details. YouTube is also a good friend. Now if you want to change the book back into the tome, you can just left click in the air with the book in your hand. Now you should be fully prepared to take on all of the challenges that All The Mod 6 has to offer. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more modded Minecraft guides.